he's got an Omni Slash, and who's he gonna go for? Onto Arteezy, Omni Slash comes out, Arteezy gonna get sliced and diced onto your side Clockwork as well, it's a team wipe, Secret have lost game two, we're going to a game three. My friend showed me that I can still uh, remember the guy who I was kind of playing other random custom games on Warcraft 3 with. Uh, it was initially, I was living in Singapore when I was like 15, 14 years old. Uh, I started playing like random custom games on Warcraft 3 with some of my school friends, uh, just in like land cafes after school and stuff or on weekends. So uh, that got me into Warcraft 3. Then I kind of got into like the Warcraft 3, like classic melee mode. And then one day, one of the guys I was playing with was like, you have to try this game Dota. I initially hated it. Like I knew it was kind of, it was, there was very much this just feeling around it. Like it was so popular and big at the time, but it was just like, oh, it's not like a serious game or it's like a, it's, it's kind of like the new, I guess like the way Dota players talk about League was like the way my group of friends kind of talked about Dota then, because we all played Warcraft 3, which was like the pure game, I guess, and Dota was just like a spin-off custom game, so it wasn't to be taken seriously. They're just going to get the throne up of this. Holy shit, Cloud9 have lost game two. I can't believe Before it. Before kind of getting into the Australian scene, like as a manager and kind of, I guess, uh, like caster, event organizer, whatever it may be. I was actually playing. Um, I was playing with the Natural Nine guys. I was one of the, I played the kind of four position support role for the team. So I initially always just wanted to be one of the pro players. Uh, I was, I guess that's kind of how it started for a lot of people, just by either playing too much casually for fun uh, and then getting into casting or playing in a kind of more serious level. That was always at least somewhat a dream of mine. Uh, why did your pro career not work out? I was kind of, um, using Dota as, uh, using my university probably as a cover up for attempting to play Dota competitively, but I wasn't really going to classes. I was kind of struggling and then I ended up moving on and kind of dropping my studies for the time being, which is when I started working and juggling. And that was when Dota 2 came out as well. And I was like, okay, I want to make a big push with Dota 2. I started playing with Natural Nine guys who were the best in Australia, who ended up actually going to TI2. So unfortunately I was juggling, trying to play with them. And at that point my parents had stopped supporting me because I wasn't at university, I wasn't studying anymore. So I had to have a full-time job. So I was working in restaurants, bars, trying to just feed myself. Uh, I still remember a time where I would like go through all my pairs of jeans to just try and find like a few dollar coins to just like pay for a meal or something. and. Um, that was like what my life was like at one point, just because of how much I, w I just wanted to play Dota and wanted to really make it. But I still remember when the team talked to me and was like, look, this isn't gonna work out. Like you haven't got the time to commit. We also, I, and in some ways also just questioned my ability as well and my ability to commit to the team and also my ability as an individual player. Like I think my performance suffered as a result and they're like, look, we wanna try someone else out. We think we can do better with him. And that kind of crushed me at the time, but Obviously, not everyone can be a pro player. There's a lot of things that get in the way, and unfortunately, it didn't work out for me, but it amazingly led to something else, which was just as good and challenging in its own way. Are you going to see Zeus I think you're definitely generous. Jesus like, Christ, at, I'm going to stab look at, you with this pen. Look at, like, God. T.I., like, how suddenly, like, busts out a Luna. Everyone's like, wow, how suddenly picking Luna at T.I. in an elimination match, and, oh, Beachy Gaming are winning with Luna. Like, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Come? That's a good point. Initially, I was kind of organizing some small... I guess you could call them amateur tournaments, but as far as the Australian team went, it had all the best teams just because there was like not much prize money in it. So I would like kind of help organize the tournaments for the teams and people wanted to watch it. So I was like, okay, let's, this was when Xplit and Twitch was getting big. So I figured I could just easily make an account and started streaming the games. And as someone who just had played a ton competitively, loved the game, was just addicted to the game to, to be frank, I was like, okay, I want to talk about this and people want to listen. So I just started going to casting. I, um, ended up joining Gosu Gamers as one of their main Dota casters, and they gave me a ton of support, uh, helped get me to my first LAN tournament in Thailand as a Dota caster, and about six months to a year later, I actually got offered a, a, my first kind of esports job in Thailand where I was based for about six months, so. Hi, Kickstarter. I'm David Parker. And I'm David Gorman. Together? We are Beyond the Summit. Beyond, Beyond the Summit was kind of just like a placeholder name for, I guess, the project. And at least initially it was maybe more of a hobby, but uh, then it kind of transitioned into this big kind of project and idea of mine where, where I wanted to do something to really help grow the scene and be more involved myself, but also bring in other people who had kind of similar 
goals, ambitions. And LD was someone who had reached out to me and kind of heard some good things about he'd been casting with uh, Luminous over at Dota Commentary. So I just took a leap of faith and said, okay, you're from the US, you have a good streaming setup, you can stream in like 720p as opposed to like the 480p or something we were streaming in from Australia and said, look, want to join me and be the official caster for the TI2 Eastern qualifiers. Yeah, the heroes like Prophet and Morphling, they just cannot stop this push. Yeah, and this is what we talked about in the pregame, is WE don't really want to take fight these pushes That was, uh, I guess, the first time I talked to LD and casted with him. We hopped into the first cast having never even spoken together and that was just kind of how things worked at the time. You just Skype in and say, look, we're going to cast together. This is how it's going to work. And uh, it was a great, great experience. Uh, we worked really well together. And then later that year, we met at TI2 and everything worked, went really well from there. Summit 2 was when we had Whew, all kinds of problems. Um, <laughs> PC's not working, internet not working, power not working. I don't know, you, the list goes on. That was like a disaster of event for us. That was more like we made the resolution, like we're not working with a PC partner again. Um, we had like all these PCs provided and like half of them failed. And then we had to like, luckily, like I think Red Bull it was like bailed us out and like just brought the trucks filled with some of their PCs from their office down. And we're like, thank God we can actually run an event now. Um, we had all kinds of, I think even like DDoS issues throughout the day, like that, the stream was just a nightmare, everything about something too, it was just, it was, it was a rough event. <laughs> um, but we made it through and like the teams, they came back, they trusted us that, look, we're gonna fix everything. <laughs> Fucking never again, man. <laughs> never again will we do an event like that. I think by then my parents were fairly accepting. Um, when I finally relocated for BTS, it was probably the, years preceding that where they were very, I guess, non-supportive of the whole, what I was doing. Uh, largely because they didn't, I mean, partly because they didn't understand it, but largely because also I didn't communicate what I was doing or something I kind of, I guess, knew they wouldn't initially accept. So rather than try and explain and prove to them, like, this matters a lot to me, that I'm going to do this, it's going to be successful. I said, I'm just going to do it. And then they'll have to learn to deal with it. The first LAN tournament I went to in Thailand, I didn't even tell them I was going to Thailand. It happened to be like when there was a, a like bad storm coming or something and they found on Facebook I was there and they contacted me like, holy shit, like you're in Thailand. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, are you okay? Are you safe? Like, so it was, um, I was, I, I was immature at the time. So <laughs> um, in hindsight, that was probably not the best way of uh, approaching it, but um, I'm really happy where we are now. And, like my parents, it was when I first, the first TI I went to in 2012, my mum was there and I told her like, just said, come and, come and see what this is. And that was around the time where they knew I was at least somewhat serious about what I was doing. And um, it was starting to kind of build up and become a thing that I could just do more consistently. I was getting paid to do it. So my mum saw me casting or on the panel there in front of thousands of people at Benaroy Hall. And she was kind of finally had, I think a bit of a realization of like, okay, this is not just like competitive gaming is a thing. Like up until that point, my parents had no idea what it was. They just knew I'm broadcasting online and people are watching and maybe I make some ad revenue. They at least understood that this is what I was going to do. So whether I was going to succeed or not, I didn't even know, I guess. Uh, um, I was hopeful. I could, I knew I wasn't going to be a complete failure, but I didn't know if it was something that was going to last one year, five years, 10 years. Um, and I think. My parents' point of view is like they, they, they had the same feelings, but they were just like, well, he's going to do it. And they were supportive at that point. So, uh, next for me, I, let's, let's see, where do I want to go? I'd, I'd love to kind of be able to dedicate more time to, I guess, personal growth as, uh, an individual outside of Dota. I feel like so much of what's defined me over the last two years has just been Dota related, but also I do want to grow as a caster, as an analyst. Um, I feel like there's a lot more I can learn about the game and do within the game. So I want to challenge myself, but I also want to make sure that I continue to find that balance so that I can also be, I guess, um, maintain, I guess maintain a, a decent life balance and then be able to be more productive and make sure that um, events continue to go well for us.